Universities seem to be in crisis. There may be just too many on the educational market, devaluing the education that they were established to give. University inflation. Are they training for education or a job? Maybe it's time to remodel our thinking on the point of universities. Join me, Jan Darash, for How We Got Here. Poland is seen by many as a leader when it comes to research and science in the Central Eastern European region. With each passing year, new discoveries are being made by Polish researchers. Areas such as the construction of Mars rovers are led by Polish students. And this would not be possible without a university foundation that goes back hundreds of years. This year, eight Polish universities have found themselves among the world's elite and have taken up spots in the Shanghai 2024 academic ranking of world universities, although still far away from the likes of Harvard in the US, mainly due to the incomparable amounts of research funding, schools like the University of Warsaw are doing an extraordinary job with what they have. It is always in the top two of Poland's universities, with the second one being the Aguilonian University. Not just the oldest in the country, not just one of the oldest in Europe even, but one of the oldest universities in the world. Established in 1364 by King Casimir III the Great, it elevated medieval Poland and put it on par with its peers, at the time rivaling the likes of Oxford and Bologna. Another extraordinary part of Poland's history of education was the informal group known as the Lwów School of Mathematics. In the first half of the 20th century, its members greatly contributed to the development of functional analysis. Polish education suffered greatly during the Second World War. Both the Germans and the Soviets mercilessly hunted down Polish intelligentsia with the aim of exterminating the nation's brightest. In a campaign called the Intelligenzaktion, the German Nazis themselves murdered an estimated 100,000 intellectuals in 1939 and 1940 alone. But Poland's brightest had persevered and rebuilt. From the ashes, almost 80 years after the end of the war, Polish universities and polytechnics are pushing forward with bold new solutions and research. Although there is still much work to be done, the students and academics of the modern day are doing their predecessors from across Poland's vast history proud. Our guest today is Dr. Paulina Piasecka. Uh, she is the Vice Rector for Academic Affairs at the Collegium Civitas here in Warsaw. Welcome to the programme. Welcome. Um, Polish universities are generally have got a good, generally a good reputation. Uh, they, they feature in the world ranking universities, eight of them uh, this year. Um, how would you describe the, if we can say a, a broad brush, how do, you, how do you describe the status, the standard of Polish tertiary university education? Well, we still are advancing. It's not like we can say that we have already achieved the level of education and the level of teaching that we aspire to. And yet we're doing our best and we're trying to do that by well, following into the footsteps uh, and following the best practices of the Western universities. We are focusing not only on didactics, the teaching process, but also connecting what we teach with the scientific processes that allow us to give our students the knowledge that's up to date and that's connected with the modern world that they will be entering after finishing their studies. Also, and this is, I think, quite an important fact, the Polish educational system, the tertiary educational system, is quite open to the world. The internationalization processes, supported not only by the European Union within the framework of Erasmus and Erasmus+, Plus, but also bilateral agreements with many um, schools, many universities around the world, is something that gives both our students an open window to the world, but also allows us to be us as universities, the ambassadors of Poland and ambassadors of the Polish policies and the Polish perspective on how to view the world. Yes. Um, when I was at university, it was a very kind of um, one of the classic liberal education, I suppose you'd call it. You must be facing far more commercial pressures to to uh, break even, even in the, in the university sector. Um, are you feeling those particularly um, sharply you know when you think about the point of a university is it to uh, give people a good education make them good citizens or is it more dealing with getting them fit for 
their future careers or jobs. Mm. I don't think you can really separate one from another, uh, not in a world in which we already know and there is a scientific research and proof that you don't prepare a student for one career. Uh, this is the characteristic, very important characteristic of a modern society. We jump from one yes. career path to another career path. So who you want to be preparing is a person that can learn, that can read, that can understand, that can sort of sculpt their own fate with the tools that they're equipped with uh, during their university studies. So what we need to be doing is mainly give them skills and abilities, but also give them some sort of a general base, general knowledge that will allow them to sort of put value to the new knowledge, new information and new data. And so there are ways to do that. Uh, this is why, uh, among others, we still follow the process of teaching that's divided between the BA studies and MA studies, where during those th first three years at the university, you can get the proper professional education, right? I mean, this is the first step. If you don't want to continue with your studies, you are sure that this is what you want to do you go with your BA and then make your way in the world. But then the, there is a whole wide world open of knowledge and new experience if you decide to go to the MA studies and then maybe PhD studies. So this is something that needs to be interconnected. The skills, the abilities, the tools, and also shaping a person that will be simply able to push themselves through the new steps and new challenges that the modern world is creating for us. Yes, it's a, it's a very difficult um, uh, game to do, isn't it? Then uh, you, you, you make a well-rounded individual, but also give them the, uh, the technical skills to, to yes. in their career. Um, the uh, 30 years ago, you mentioned some of the, 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 the transition that the Polish educational system had to go through from a uh, state communist con uh, controlled ide ideological yep. um, sector into a privatized partially privatized sector can you can you describe the, the the 30 years that in that sector that you've experienced well that's the challenge 30 years in one or two sentences Something unknown by the West yes <laughs> So, uh, okay, the first challenge there was, was the fact that the level of scholariza scholarization, I'm sorry, the level of the number of people who had the access to even secondary and tertiary education was quite limited. So we need to remember that the People's Republic of Poland was the country of workers and farmers. Um, getting the higher education, that was not necessarily something that pushed you towards having a career in the party, in the military, in the law enforcement, say. So there was no need for that many spaces, that many places at the universities. So this boom uh, when it comes to private and not public education, because there was a difference in Poland, there were at least two categories of new schools that were being created after 1990. Some were created by just private individuals, as you know, private commercial entities offering under the supervision of Ministry of Education or Ministry of Science, the tertiary education. But there were also schools uh, like Collegium Civitas that were created by, uh, well, associations and institutions that weren't fully commercial, that were non-for-profit organizations, but they were not public, not in the sense of being financed by the state. So, uh, well, those universities, uh, not always universities, sometimes these were just the schools offering the BA level education, but we do have various categories of those private and non-public schools. Schools who, for example, are able to offer you the PhD level education or the habilitacja, as we call it in Polish, um, level of getting your scientific grade. Um, and the numbers were fluctuating. There were some uh, prognoses saying that there will be sharp decline in the number of schools, private and non-public schools, connected not only with the quality of teaching, because, well, 
quite often do we hear that the mass education, the mass amount of uh, educational institutions may lead to lowering the quality. Yes, it was one of the criticisms of the expansion of the UK uh, universities in the 1990s. Yeah. And there's always this risk, but well, yeah. it depends on who's creating the university and how much attention do they pay to the quality of education, quality of science that's backing up the education. Um, and so it's not necessarily connected. This is for sure a risk and for sure it needs the close supervision from the state. But this is why we have those controlling institutions mm -hmm. uh, that actually do check how we teach, what we teach, according to what programs. So right now in Poland, uh, the challenges that we face as this non-public or private university categories of schools are connected with First and foremost, demography. Yes. yes. This is the you global challenge, right? Seats, yeah. Yes. Less and less children being born, and so less and less people that choose to go to the university. Uh, the changes in generally attitude towards higher education uh, and tertiary education uh, for longest time, when in Poland and generally in the Eastern Bloc, the studies were just those five years studies standard five years of studying at the university there was no choice no ma's ba's anything like that and for quite a long time that was the persistent uh thinking of people if you are to have the tertiary education you need to have the ma the masters uh, we are witnessing right now the change also uh, in that aspect. Quite a few of our students decide to end their tertiary edu education after getting their BA. Uh, and the third category is quite obviously the regulations, the changing policies, and also the fact that we are on the intersection between the scientific policies and other administrative policies connected with completely other fields of um, politics that influence us adversely. Yes. Um, has the expansion of Polish universities been to the detriment of uh, other institutions like uh, vocational technical colleges, polytechnics, uh, trade schools, or are we seeing a parallel expansion of the sector, those particular sectors? I don't think the technical schools suffered, like polytechnics um, or the... Um, well, it's. it's uh, the universities that deal mainly with this hard physics, mathematics, and all of those unimaginably magical things that require literacy in numbers, however absurd that might seem. But yes, we did uh, witness the decline of the trade schools, the schools, because um, during the um, times of Polish uh, People's Republic, we had you could go after finishing the primary score. You could go either to the high school, like yeah. the general academic teaching with humanistic or mathematic profiling. There was also a category of just vocational schools. And the, I think you could call it the trade college, but it was not college because it was just after the primary school. Yeah. So what we have witnessed was almost a complete destruction of the vocational schools. Um, and this belief, this very hard belief that in order to succeed in life, you need the university degree, uh, which was to the detriment of both universities and people who would do much better and would be much more fulfilled if they were allowed to yes. follow their dreams other than, you know, getting the university degree. But is this, is this still a, a, a genuine pressure that a 16-year-old or 17-year-old feels that it's a career path that they must take, school, university, career. Here I in think it will be changing right now because uh, I think that just as with the communication, the internet gave people mm -hmm. much more belief in their own power of doing things and then communicating about the things that I'm doing with the world. Because otherwise, if you want to go into any sort of traditional profession, traditional I mean that you have the em employer and the social security and generally be employed by somebody. There is the problem that's persistent uh, in most of the Polish institutions that the, the, this paper, this piece of paper saying that you have graduated from the university is just demanded. You, you, you can't be, I mean, I think in the IT, 
it's just a little bit different. The IT is much too reasonable to base employment just yes. on the basis of somebody having or not having the university degree. But otherwise, public administration, look at any announcement that somebody is looking for an employee. You will almost everywhere. You will see at least BA, at least. And as we draw an end to our discussion, uh, we've talked a lot about the problems and the challenges that faced by the uh, the sector, the university sector. Um, what are the main strengths? How would you define what Poland is good in? Is it IT, maths, uh, oh, I mean... Greek philosophy? I don't know. <laughs> what, 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 would a, what would a student come to Poland and study saying, this is a great place? OK. Uh, I might be biased because I'm highly <laughs> connected with else. the idea of political sciences, sure. but we are at the great crossroads of Europe. Also, we are the place that is right now the closest to some of the milestones that either have already happened or will happen quite soon uh, when it comes to international safety and security and stability on the global scale. Also, when it comes to the strengths, uh, we especially when it comes to universities, we are quite open and we are quite able to communicate interculturally, which is a very, very... There's many English language courses, for example. Yes, very almost university each and level. every university mm -hmm. will offer some and some schools will offer also purely English speaking or English taught um, whole programs of studies, not individual courses, but you can, you know, just get uh, your degree by speaking only English uh, in Poland. Um, so the political sciences, the social sciences, the openness and intercultural um, ability to, again, communicate and teach and learn from our students. This is something that I greatly enjoy learning from our students that come from abroad. Um, and also, well, if you do want to study IT, uh, one might be tempted to say that uh, Polish uh, programmers, Polish software engineers are among the best in the world and they actually do win quite a few global contests. In I've that heard area. that for a long time that the, the Poles are very good maths with the, the numbers bit. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. Piaseska, thank you very much for coming on. Thank That's you very much. Great. So uh, that's uh, all we have time for today. Do join us next time uh, for How We Got Here.